it seems to me that there is a one is a mind body connection, but two, uh, because I think our thoughts and our feelings and our ideas are non physical states. I think it's provable, but um, uh, it seems to me that there is something about the regulatory process of micro RNA that. Uh, and this is probably going too far, so uh, but this is how I think of it is it's as if we're watching fine tuning right in front of us, like it's happening like it's there's regulation happening, and it looks like this fine tuning that's almost in real time uh yeah. but there's a process that's been instituted that suggests that you know this is supposed to be regulated in a way that isn't just happenstance or or just accident, yeah. No, I mean, you know, there is this, um, you know, notion that there is actually a biochemical version of fine tuning. In fact, I wrote a book a few years ago called Fit for a Purpose where Mm -hmm. I made that very case. Mm -hmm. Uh, But, you know, one thing that's remarkable to me as a biochemist is just the precision of biochemical systems. Mm -hmm. They, they, They are so precise. They're so exquisitely optimized that even the slightest deviation causes, you know, havoc, hmm. you know, in, in, in the system. And so, you know, it's very difficult to envision how a system that is that optimized and that exquisitely fine tuned could ever essentially evolve Yeah, uh, because anything towards, you know, that's not optimized, it's not operating with high precision that has any swap to it is actually going to be, you know, life would be impossible. Yeah. So it's either like all or nothing. Hmm. But you're right. There's this elegance, this sophistication, this optimization, this precision that you see in every aspect of, of biochemistry that is just mind-boggling. And the more that you know about how biochemical systems work, even the more remarkable these systems become. It's not, you know, just a perception that you get as an uninitiated person. It's that as you roll up your sleeves and you get into the details, it's even more astounding at, at how optimal and, and precise these systems are. That, that by the way, it, it, I, we should pause for a second there and just marinate in what you just said, because I think oftentimes people think that um, you know, I, and I, I can't. It's often attributed to Francis, Francis Bacon. I have no idea who said it, and if even anybody said it, or just sort of arose as one of these. Uh, ephemeral memes of the internet, where someone said that a little uh, a little science inclines one to atheism, a lot of science inclines one to theism, um, and what you just said is basically a version of that. I don't know who said it, but it was brilliant in one sense because I think a lot of people think that if I dive into the science, I'm going to find some stuff I don't like. And if I'm a believer in God, the more I dive into the science, the more I'm going to find stuff that's going to bother me. And what you just said is the exact opposite of that. Is that your your initial perception of design is actually more warranted the more you dive into it. And I think that that's such an important thing for us to understand and really, really take in. It's not even just a negative thing. Like, we can't explain this any other way. RTB has a, a an actual testable model where you're saying, not like, uh, you can't explain this by science yet, so we'll just throw God in, like a God of the gaps thing. Mm-hmm. Um, or even if you couldn't even explain it in principle, um, there's actually predictive models. Uh, there's actually a prediction here that it should be this way if God exists, um, and we're finding it to be that way. So I think that's just something worth marinating on for a second, because what you said was so profound, and I think a lot of people will be benefited from the fact that someone as accomplished as you and who knows who knows the science um, and can read the scientific literature and sees it and then sees what's going on with this like micro RNA stuff as one ex- as but one example. The more you d- dive into it the more remarkable it becomes. And just one last thing I want to say, but as I sort of wax on here for a second, but I just think of the words you use when you describe this. Words like optimize and functional and remarkable. These are all adaptationist words. So this, so anytime anybody within the scientific orthodoxy uses words like optimized, that suggests someone's that you can say, okay, natural processes are optimizing these things. But there's a qualitative thing about that word that they're trying to denude it of, or you might find that there are certain dirty words you just can't use anymore, like optimization. Well, you know, it's interesting, Abdu, that you bring this up uh, because, you know, um, 
my experience with biochemists and biologists is you cannot escape design language when you talk about life systems. You just can't. Mm -hmm. 